Good morning, Facebook. Welcome to Bringing the Zoo to You here at Brookfield Zoo. As always, thank you for joining us and thank you for your continued support. Today we're at the Hamel Play Zoo. My name is Craig, I'm an animal care specialist and I have my lovely co-host, Jill. And we're gonna show you guys a lemur training session and show, talk to you about why training is important and we're gonna explain kind of what we're doing, so go ahead. Well, Craig <laughs> forgot the most important part and that's to ask if you guys like to move it, move it like we do here at the zoo. <laughs> If you don't understand that reference, it's from the movie Madagascar, and that's King Julian, who is also a ring-tailed lemur, just like our group here. So we have four of our keepers in with four of our male ring-tailed lemurs, and we're doing a special training session for you guys to kind of show you some of the behaviors that we do that allow us to not only mentally stimulate our animals, but also allow us to get up close and personal with them and um, get a good look at them, almost like doing a mini physical every single day. So you can see the keepers, um, those wooden sticks that they have in their hand with the little ball on the end. We call that a target. So the um, target is a really important tool that we use for training. And if you watch here right in the front, the lemur is trained to touch the ball on the end of the stick with their hand. And when they do that, you'll hear the keeper say, good, which tells the lemur that they did the behavior we were asking for and that they're gonna get a treat. So a uh, very common question here is what do lemurs like to get for treats? And the answer is fruit. So they really love sweet foods. Um, and we make sure we measure out the amounts that they get every day so they're not getting too much. But it looks like today they might be getting some kind, some apple maybe, or maybe some pear. Um, but they do love craisins as well. Their main diet is um, mostly fruits and veggies, uh, a lot of leafy greens, and we also provide them with different types of chow which um, gives them a really balanced and complete diet. So target training is really useful to us. Like I said before, it kind of allows us to get them to stand up tall. We can ask them to stretch a little bit, get a look at their belly, at their hands. But um, Scott's demonstrating right here, he's asking the lemur to come to the floor. And so we can use that behavior to ask the lemur to go onto a scale if we need to get their weight, or if we, um, we can ask them to go into a crate if we have to bring them somewhere. So it's a really useful kind of general tool that we have here at the zoo. <laughs> and our training is always choice based, so we don't force the animals to participate. So if the lemur didn't want to touch the target, then that's okay, they just won't get that treat. And we might ask them to do something else instead and maybe try again later. So the four lemurs here, like I said before, are males. And let's see if I can get them all right just by looking at them from here. So starting closest to us, we have uh, dogwood and then looks like Jen is training Moses and then the next one over there is I believe yeah oh sorry yeah wait my bad all right so number okay, one hold on, let's, hold, on hold on hold on hold on let's start over let's start over. starting over okay so, <laughs> number one with Scott uh, is dogwood they do look so similar so for Jill who primarily works with our budgie she doesn't see him as frequently anymore and that's okay but uh so the first one was Dogwood, then next with Jen is Ramses, and then with Keeper Jamie, the little guy right there is uh, Moses, and then the guy at the end with Adelina is Butch, and he's by the window. Thank you, Craig. You're welcome. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't like an actual test. Yeah. No. She failed. I was testing Craig, that's what we were doing. Oh, okay. So yeah, if we watch Scott true. in the front here, he's working on a really special behavior, <laughs> which we might not get to see, but that's okay. But he's actually training this lemur to jump and touch his hand. Um, and that's really cool because it demonstrates a natural behavior for the lemurs that they can jump and leap around. Um, and they'll utilize this entire exhibit to jump around the branches and look for food. Um, but again, it's also a good way for us to kind of check the physical condi condition of the lemur and see how they're doing. <laughs> we didn't touch that. Yeah. <laughs> How long does it take to train a lemur to do something like what Scott's training? It can, uh, it depends on the lemur, it depends on their personality, it depends on the behavior even. So um, Scott's been working this behavior with Dogwood for uh, quite a while now and Dogwood actually does it really well. Um, but at the same time, this might be a, a little bit of a different time of the day that he's used to working with Scott. There's um, a handful of keepers in here that might make him a little bit more a little nervous. 
But um, but it kind of all depends, Ooh. and sometimes too, it depends on the method we're using. And, and there are times where we realize that maybe this method uh, we're we're finding difficulties in, in using this one, so we might try and change it up a little bit, and might find a quicker and better success that way. So um, there are a lot of factors that'll go into um, the time it takes to train behaviors. Okay. Yeah, so you guys can see that Jen is targeting her lemur to move around to the different branches um, and utilizing the whole space. And then if you look closer by the window, you see Jamie and Adelina training their lemurs at their stations. So when we start the training session, we always ask the lemurs to go to their particular spots. Um, and, and we don't start unless you know they're at that spot. But again, if they don't want to participate, that's okay. So do they all have their own color of target? They do. They have different um, colored shapes that they each recognize and can uh, okay. be called to go to. How long does the training session usually last? Depends on a few factors. It might depend on um, if they're all willing to participate. Um, sometimes, you know, they don't want to, and that's fine. Maybe the, there's some external factor that's causing them not to want to train, which is okay. Um, but if it's going well, like, like it is today, we might train until we all run out of fruit. But we always end the sessions at the same time so that the lemurs aren't getting, you know, one's not getting more fruit than the other, and we kind of keep it fair that way. And you always try to end on a positive note, right? Right, that's right. Okay. So what are some of their, uh, their favorite things to do? Some of their favorite behaviors, I mean. <laughs> well, um, they're very keen on coming up to their station and doing the targeting because that's pretty easy work. It's low risk, <laughs> but it's high reward. So as you can see, like I said with Dogwood, um, we're having a little bit uh, more difficulty getting him to come to the floor and getting him to do that jump behavior with Scott. And that again, that could just be, um, he's a little nervous. There's a lot going on right now. There's a lot of keepers in there. Um, but uh, as far as um, training behaviors go, like targeting, they all, they always target. They love grabbing the, uh, the target. Sometimes they'll grab it incorrectly and look at you like, haha, like, what are you gonna do about this? In which case we don't reinforce that behavior. Um, you might see them doing a spin behavior too. We've trained them to do that spin behavior for uh, crating. So they'll go in their crate, but their tails are so long that uh, sometimes it's in the way. So they'll actually, we train the spin so that the tail will tuck in and then we can shut the door without shutting it on their, um, on their tail, which that took a long time to train. It was a very complicated process. Um, but with that, crate training is something they don't seem to enjoy because um, although going in the crate uh, willingly is positive uh, for us and for them, like we're not having to grab them and force them in. Um, being, you know, in a crate with the door shut can be something that uh, makes them nervous, but also, you know, if we ever have to crate them a lot of times, it's for things like going to the vet to get uh, a checkup or look at a sickness or an injury, in, in which case that is pretty negative for them, but we try and reinforce heavily when they do behaviors that we consider much harder, or much uh, more risky. How did they all get their names? They actually came to us with those names. Um, we do sometimes, if they have such a, a weird name, we might, <laughs> like keepers might, pick new names or vote on them or sometimes uh, we have maybe like a donor that really likes a lemur and they might want to um, you know name a lemur but these guys all came to us with these names and we thought they were funny and they're we liked unique. them. Yeah. <laughs> they're unique. Um, not, not up here today we have two other lemur, two boy lemurs, Sam Bass, that's one name, and then Skinner and uh, all the keepers here uh, are Simpsons fans so whenever we <laughs> You know, talk to Skinner. We always think of the the superintendent that goes Skinner. You know, and then he always looks like he's like, what? So. so, what types of things do they spend their day doing? They do a lot of foraging or looking for food. Um, so, um, lemurs are primates and they are very intelligent. So we have to provide them with a lot of enrichment and a lot of mental stimulation. Um, so in the wild, they would look for food up in the trees, but also down on the ground. So we kind of switch up what we give them. Sometimes we might mix their food up in 
different substrates like bark chips or hay or straw. Um, or we might place it up high in hanging bowls or in other things that they might have to go look for. So they rely mostly on their sense of smell, but um, they can also you know, look for their food to try to find it too. Um, and actually one of the cool things about this exhibit, if you look all the way in the back corner over there, you see um, an artificial tree that has a bunch of little holes in it. So that was actually made here at the zoo and it's hooked up to a computer and it can open up so that the keepers can stash treats in there and um, the computer will open different doors throughout the day. So the lemurs might hear the doors opening or maybe smell the treats inside and then um, it gives them an opportunity to kind of look for food throughout the day. That's really neat. Um, aside from their training treats, what types of food do they eat? Um, yeah, so they're omnivores, but they eat mostly um, leafy greens and veggies. Um, so things like um, green beans or tomatoes or carrots. Um, they really like steamed sweet potato. That's one of their favorites. Um, and then they get different kinds of greens and we give them browse as well. So like branches, um, like mulberry or uh, maple too. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite fact about a lemur? Mm, I think my favorite fact is that they have a, a matriarchal society. So um, they can live in groups of up to 30 lemurs and the females would be in charge. So that brings up an interesting point because we do have six male lemurs here at the zoo, um, but we have them split up in a group of four and in a group of two. Um, because they don't have a female in the group, they tend to get into little scuffles over who's the boss. Um, so depending on the different types of or time of year, they might be in uh, you know, three groups of two or like they are now. Um, so it kind of just depends. Mm -hmm. Um, at what point do they have access to their outdoor habitat? Good question. So we have a set, um, set uh, temperature guidelines that we follow. Um, the door is shut right now, but that's just because we're doing the training session. <laughs> um, so they will get access later on today, and they really love to go outside when it's warm out. Um, so even though the play zoo is closed, sometimes if you're walking out in front of the play zoo, you could see them outside sunning themselves. They do what's called the yoga pose, where they sit back and kind of stretch their arms and legs out to soak up some sun. Mm -hmm. They do that in the window here, too. <laughs> yes. So that's really neat to see from outside. Yeah. Um, Craig, what's your favorite lemur fact? <laughs> I, uh, I like the, the goofy, weird stuff. So <laughs> lemurs, um, they do a lot of scent marking um, mm -hmm. on their furniture and uh, as a way to kind of show some dominance or maybe even start some fights and scuffling they will do what they call stink fighting in which case they will rub their tail all over the scentiest parts of their bodies and then they'll uh swing their tail up over their head and they'll start flicking at each other oh and they gosh. like it's like they're flicking the scent particles at each other and that that's pretty funny it's cute um that gets a lot of you know a lot of laughs when we do live chats in front of guests Oh my goodness. So that's a pretty fun one. But lemurs are, they're just very interesting animals, especially since they come from such a, in the grand scheme of things, such a small place uh, in the world where there's uh, around a hundred different species of them. So. Oh, that was going to be my next question. How many so species ring of lemurs? Yeah, ring-tailed lemurs are pretty common, um, one of the more well-known ones. But what, what makes them kind of unique, too, is that you know lemurs are typically arboreal, but um, ring-tailed lemurs actually spend a, a bit more time on the ground than the other species too. It's almost close to a half and half. I'd say like a 60-40 uh, in the trees to the ground ratio. But um, they're uh, you know when people think of a lemur, that's usually the first thing they go to is the ring-tailed lemur. Mm -hmm. And what size would their family group typically be in their native habitat? It can range anywhere from, you know, 5 to 10 to up to 30. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And what do they feel like? They're very soft, honestly. Yeah. Uh, not that we do a lot of tactile with these guys, um, but we are training them, or some of them have been trained to let us um, feel their stomach uh, and then even go further to using, like, a stethoscope to listen mm. to a heartbeat. Not that that's something that we as zookeepers need to do, but it's something that we can um, get them more comfortable with things that 
veterinarians might need to do with them. So, so we have done a lot of um, cute lemur belly touches, um, and they're super soft. It's crazy how soft they are, like a chinchilla. <laughs> Well, all right. Thank you guys for joining us and, and hanging out with the lemurs here at the Play Zoo. Uh, as always, thank you for your continued support, and we hope to see you soon. I smile.